Senior Product Manager Mike Freitas has been responsible for managing many of your favorite plugins, including the Signature Series, Abbey Road plugins, and most, if not all, of our modeling plugins. He's going to give us some insight on what it's like making a plugin with an artist. Mike, welcome. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me. So tell us, um, what is your role at Waves and what do you do in your everyday work? Well, for the past 13 years, I've been uh, managing a lot of Waves uh, plugins, both the project management and the product management, then taking it into the development stage and making sure that whatever we're developing at Waves makes sense to the end user. Then going on into uh, a layout design of the plugin, what kind of controls we're going to offer to the users, how they're going to look, if it's going to be a radio button, a fader, a rotation knob, what kind of meters we want to give in, in the plugin. In. So you're really involved in, in every detail, every angle of the product. Yep. So when developing a plugin with an artist, what is their role in the process? Well, artists are involved in two uh, main projects we're doing. One is modeling and one is their artist signature. So I'll talk about the later one first. In the process of creating an artist signature plugin, the involvement of the artist is vast. First of all, uh, it's his ideas of sound. It's usually things that he's been using for 20, 30 years constantly over his mixes. And he brought his art in that specific type of processing to perfection. Usually, it can start by the artist approaching us and having a certain idea uh, that he wants to create. Or sometimes uh, it's a joint venture where we're actually going into a studio and we're starting opening, start opening a lot of mixes and trying to find what a lot of those mixes have in common. And uh, not an easy task, but you always find some things that suddenly you're like, oh, wow, I've been doing this and this so many on so many mixes. And uh, sometimes the artist is not even aware that this is something that he's going to. And it's, it's funny to see that at the end of the process of trying to define what we're going to do, the artists usually uh, have learned a lot about himself and the way he works, something that he never paid attention to during his work. Um, after we find those uh, things in common that we have and things that might be uh, relevant to his sound, uh, sort of speaking, we go into the stage of coming up with the algorithms that uh, will produce that kind of process. Uh, that we need to create uh, external devices he's using, compressors, EQs that have a certain sound signature that we need to find a way uh, to recreate in order to perfectly match his chain. Then once we think that the algorithm is there and the process is happening uh, and the artist is happy with the sound, we're going into a stage of, I like to build uh, a graphic slash design profile for the artist. So that means that I'm asking him for a huge list of uh, album covers that he likes, uh, car designers, colors, architectures, painters, uh, different artists, anything that can help me visually get into his head and into his world of uh, aesthetics that he likes. Um, then once I get all that information, we're sitting together we're, with our designer team, uh, designer's team, and we're trying to figure out how the plugin should look like. So if I understand, it, it's not just that a signature series plugin has the sound of the artist. It actually, that's the look that, that's, that's coming from him, his inspiration of what he sees, uh, sort of the, the visual representation of the sound in a way. Is that yes, fair? Yes, uh, absolutely. Unfortunately for me, we can only deliver two senses in a plugin, visual and audible. If I could deliver all the senses, I would try to make it happen because I think that it really, really, really impacts on the whole experience. And who is the guy behind the sound? It, it has a lot to do with trying uh, to bring him to the front and giving the user a small taste of the whole environment. Because 
probably, as you know, when you go into someone's studio, uh, there's a certain vibe inside the control room. Definitely. The vibe is the mixer's vibe. And this is something that we're trying to bring into the plugin because for me, it's really important that when you use the product, you get as much as the, of the content world of the artist as you would uh, by sitting with them in the studio. So yeah, it, it's a huge part of it. It's very, very true. I mean, even uh, I remember, for instance, with the Manny Mariquin series and those GUIs, they came out and then one time when I was in his studio and I was like, wow, this, this is like the GUI of the plugin. It's the whole vibe. It has is a there. lot. Yes, yes. It's really uh, cool. In Manny's bundle, there are a lot of the designs that are actually coming from the design of the studio, the interior design of the studio. And this is something that uh, we put a lot of effort in creating. In a lot of cases when working with artists, I had, uh, they were telling me, Listen, I've been working with the plugin a lot. It's working, it's great. That's before we have the graphic user interface. I don't really expect any changes to go on. And when they get it with the graphical user interface, suddenly they're like, that, that is not uh, pronounced enough. We need to bring more high frequencies here. We need more compression. This purple color is not exactly the purple color that I envisioned in the plugin. We need to play with that a little bit, so it goes into a cycle of improvement. It shows how much the visual can influence a what lot. you're hearing. And yes. even, even if you yes. think about, you know, the old days of analog, you never looked at a doll, but you wonder how much that influences mixers today when they're actually looking at the waveforms and, and the yeah. things that they're yeah. hearing. Yeah, it has a lot of impact on how they want to experience things, absolutely. Uh, although we're in the audio domain, visual uh, is a big part of it, uh, for good or for bad. Depends what happens during the process. You started talking about signature series, and we've gone through kind of what's involved in creating that from start to finish. But there's two different kinds of plugins that we make with artists: um, signature series and modeling plugins. What's the difference between these in terms of the artist's involvement? Well, um, when we're going for a modeling project, obviously we're modeling uh, a specific piece of hardware. But uh, as much as I love sound, I'm not a huge expert on every piece of hardware ever built. And I didn't experience a lot of mileage on every piece of hardware that uh, was ever built. And that's where the artists come in to help me out and understand exactly what makes that piece of hardware tick. Where is the sweet spots of it? How are you going to use it beside the regular uses and making sure that it will react in the same way? So, so as opposed to like a signature series, it's all about the artist. It's their idea. It's their baby. They, what they want to put out into the world. But when we're talking about... What they developed. What they, what they developed in their method of work. Yes. Whereas when you have like a, the Puig Child or the Shep 73 or the CLA 76, the artist is more acting as a, a very involved consultant in that he's saying... You're almost, you've almost got it, or, or no, or, you know. When yeah, Jack but check out plugin, this yeah. setting that I do in the hardware, okay? Your plugin is not doing the same thing, so I have to scratch my head and go, okay, why it's not doing that? And, um, and trying to improve that until we reach a place where he's like, well, I love it. It does what I expect it to do. And I think that's the key. For me, it's really hard to define what the user expects it to do. And they really know because they've had so much hours working with it and so, so many years working with it. They know what the user expects and they're helping me uh, create that. As, as a mixer or a producer, one of the hardest things to know is, is when is the song done? When is the mix done? Or do, when do you stop twiddling? So let me ask you the same thing with the plugin. How do you know when the plugin is ready to be released? If there is an artist involved, uh, it'll be the point where he's saying, I'm extremely happy with it. And uh, I'd I make sure that technically we haven't missed anything inside the plugin. Uh, because from my experience, um, usually artists, when if we're talking about modeling, uh, they'll go to certain positions in the hardware. 
and that's the sound they're looking for, and they don't really care what happens in the boundaries of the process, okay? That's what they're looking for, and when it's there, they're happy. It's my job to make sure that the whole range of the compression or uh, the EQ is not doing uh, stupid things, uh, that the filters are built right, they're doing whatever they're supposed to do. But when me, the artist, and the quality assurance team and the beta testers are happy, that's, the, that's when it stops. So it's basically a kind of a team effort. There is no one authority that can decide that from now on it's done, we're not touching it because there are always things that he didn't take into account. But once all three uh, are happy with what's going on, then we feel we're secure enough to release it. Can, can you talk just really briefly about the testing that goes on before a plugin is released? Ooh, yeah, that's a that's an. I mean, it could be a video. A very exhaust. Yeah, but... it it could be a video on its own, but basically. We have uh, a quality assurance team of 12 beta testers. Uh, six of them are testing the PC side, six of them are testing the Mac side. Um, and there are, I believe, I might be wrong here because it changes almost every day, 16 different platforms we support. Okay, so each side of the PC or the Mac has to go through uh, all those platforms. Uh, going through uh, crazy stress tests of automation. Um, opening as much instances as possible, trying to make sure the computer doesn't go crazy. Looking for all the crashes. Uh, controls that are defined to give the users certain ranges, but de facto are giving them different ones that we need to change. Graphical bugs, things that I don't even see. They find a certain pixel that is not right in the design. I didn't see it. The graphic designer didn't see it. They saw it because they're used to do that. So there is a first stage of quality assurance in-house. Very, very thorough uh, process. Then when they feel that the product is stable enough, it goes out to beta, beta testers. That's another 100 or 150 people different platforms, different operating systems that are getting the plugins and just dive in and run it through their work, through their uh, workflow uh, inside their environment and report anything they find weird, uh, they think should be improved or doesn't work well. So it's a very tedious process. Uh, and because operating systems are changing constantly and nobody's coming to ask waves uh, is that okay if we change all that architecture and make your plugins obsolete in the next version of, uh, of the operating system? And then we have to like really react quickly and do a lot of effort of fixing things. Um, so the effort is huge. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Yanni, for having me. It's been a great interview. Hope you en you'll enjoy watching it.